So today we will read Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, verse 8. And please, whoever wants to share, <clears throat> don't hesitate, don't be shy, be bold, and open your heart so that we can relish or your sweetness or your emotions and realizations. So maybe we can start. Maharaji. When can I become the broom for sweeping the courtyard of the cottage in the play grove of Maharaj Rishabhanu's daughter, who is an ocean of Rasa, and to whose maidservants the supreme male person who wears a crown of peacock feathers always pitifully prays for her audience. I read it once more. When can I become the broom for sweeping the courtyard of the cottage in the play grove of Maharaj Rishabhanu's daughter, who is an ocean of Raza, and to whose maidservants the supreme male person who wears a crown of peacock feathers always pitifully prays for her audience. So Radhe Radhe, before we continue <clears throat> on the commentary, maybe we can say something about these words. It's one of the opening verses in the beginning of Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. And we can hear from the words of Prabhupada Saraswati, we can hear his humility. And it's very obvious in these words, because through his words, he is expressing his deep feeling of affection to Radhika. But in these words, he is not saying, I want to be your maidservant. He is saying, I want to be your the broom for cleaning your courtyard. I want to be a broom. So this word broom is actually a very nice word for meditation. And if we go deep, just in this tool, broom, maybe the form of broom will appear in the screen of our mind and heart. Because nothing in the spiritual world is a death. Broom in material world is not living entity. But the broom, especially in Kunja, is very alive. And by the mercy, by the Kripa of Manjaris, by the Kripa of Radhika, and by the Kripa of Broom, maybe we can see the form, the beauty, the sweetness of that Broom. How it looks like. How it smells. 
So we can see here that just one word, vroom, is enough to help us to enter in deep meditation. And another point from words, which is full of points, we will talk later on about that, is that Prabhupada Saraswati exactly knows to whom he wants to belong and whose courtyard he wants to clean. So cleaning is a very simple seva. But if devotee is doing with love to his beloved Ishtadev, in that moment, devotee becomes prema pujarini. Because he is doing it with full prema, he is connected with the tool paraphernalia, which is also made of prema, in the courtyard, which is also made of prema, for beloved embodiment of prema. So just from one broom, so many things can appear in our heart and help us to meditate. It's not necessary to go on other parts of Lila. I'm speaking this because very often devotees are asking how to meditate, what is your bhajan? Broom. In this moment, the broom is one object of meditation. And not only object of meditation, the broom can be object of absorption because it's very closely connected with Swamini and her lovely exchange with her Nagar. I just wanted to say like this, because this words is the beginning words and putting the Sadaka on the right place to be humble when he approaches Lila Smaran. And in the and in the <clears throat> sorry, my voice is broken. In Vilapa Kusumanjali, in the beginning of Vilapa Kusumanjali, Ragunath also is praying, please allow me to do me menial service <coughs> to clean your bathroom. <coughs> to flush with the water, the drain from your bathroom. And I want to dry the floor of that bathroom with my hair. Simple. No philosophy, no verses, logic, arguments. I just want to dry, to wipe the floor. Because when devotee is full of prema, whatever he is doing is also prema. And he is a premika devotee because he is touched by the embodiment of prema. So like everything comes in the contact with Radhika becomes Mahabhava, everything that comes with, in contact with devotee who is Radha Dasi, immediately becomes Seva Rupaya. So this is paraphernalia for worshipping, broom, hair, cloth, water for flushing, so this is very nice and very sweet, make minds peaceful, 
heart open and helps heart to melt. Because the word, now I see, the word Sanskrit for broom is marjana. And automatically the words, cheto darpana marjanam, bhava mahadava agniniva. Cleaning the heart with singing the holy name. Holy name is this broom for the cleaning room of the heart, which is not so pure. Just for the broom. We can speak and relish and do bhajan so many hours. Radhe, Radhe. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say something? Ah, yes, I can. A little bit. One, just mention one story about the room, about cleaning. Uh, how you told Marjana, Cheto Darpana Marjanam or Gundiche Marjanam? Uh, Duki Krishna Das, who is more famous by the name of Shyamananda, but in that time he was Duki Krishna Das. He learned from Jiva Goswami. He was for him Shiksha Guru, um, art of devotional service. And once he asked his Guru, I want to do something special. Can you give me such service? And Jiva Goswami thought, okay, you can clean one kunja on the bank of Yamuna. And from that day, Nuki uh, Krishna started to clean this kunja. How clean kunja? For this, you need broom. <laughs> what is I, I remember it. And, and what the fortune came to his life by this service? Once, it seems like occasionally Shemata Radhika lost one ankle bell. <laughs> and he found this ankle bell. And then he saw and touched, he understood it's not usual ankle bell, it's something special. And he showed this ankle bell to his guru, Jiva Gasame, and he recognized, oh, it's special ankle bell. You can return on the, that person whom it, this ankle bell is belong. Soon, two girls came and asked, oh, Chota Baba, Chota means young, oh. Sadhu. Do you found here some ankle bells? Yes, I found. Oh, can you return to us? It belongs to our girlfriend. No, I could not. Why? Because my guru told me, well, he gave me one instruction, important instruction. Anyone, anything what I will found here, I can return on the, the to whom who is this thing is belong. What is why? I can return only your girlfriend, not to you. And they try to make him fear, but he was, how to say, determined to follow Guru instructions. And what's happened ultimately? It was these two girls, was uh, Lalita and Vishaka. And they brought him to Shimati Radhika. And he came to Shimati Radhika in, in his Swarup and received the name Shyamananda where and Tilaka, so much mercy received, just by broom, broom. <laughs> Rade, Rade. Yeah. It's this, you. Uh, you remind me. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> so much. The greatness of Radha's maid servants. In the previous two verses, the sweetness of the Vashanti Rasa, Krishna's vernal Rasa Lila, was revealed to Sripad. Sri Krishna had abandoned all the gopis that were his heroines in the Rasa dance and went to relish the sweetness of Rasheshwari's Radhikas 
moon-like face in a lonely bower in the previous verse Sri Pada lost that vision so he prayed for the vision of Radha's sweet face now Sri Pada's heart floats once more on the waves of prayer into the kingdom of transcendental pastimes. He gets the vision of these pastimes by Srimati's grace, not through his own endeavors. So we can see here the prayer. It's so powerful word which is using so many which we are using so many times. But in pure devotional service, prayer, a prayer, sorry, is offered to be loved. Not for my benefit but for the pleasure of Beloved. Usually we are praying for something for ourselves, but also Radha There is a deep meaning in the prayer. Devotee who is a pure devotee, he knows that his heart prayer is satisfying, giving the pleasure to his Ishtadev. It's not only prayer, I want to see you, I want to serve you. Yes, this is what I want. But also, deep in the heart, I know that my hankering <coughs> through this prayer will satisfy you. And this is the main reason also why devotee in Sadakavesh is also serving through the Vandanam. Is it Vandanam? Hmm? Prayer? Vandana? Yeah. 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 Okay. Through the Vandana, he is serving beloved deity. So, with all <coughs> ingredients of devotional service, Navadu Bhakti, this Shravan and Kirtanam, uh, they are meant for our benefit. But on the stage of pure devotional service, devotee is listening and hearing because this hearing gives the pleasure to Radhika, to his beloved Ishtade. This kata or pata reading is giving pleasure Yuga Lakishor, Radha and Mohan. Our prayer also gives the pleasure to them in our sadhakavesh. So this prayer is full of emotions of separation. And this kind of emotions gives Radha Mohan special pleasure. If we are like a sadhakas, neophytes, if we are aware of it, then the prayer becomes bhajan. Because there is no difference between bhajan on lila and the prayer for bhajan and for lila. If the heart is full of pure love, if the heart is melting, yes, I say if, but we should follow those who are already on that stage as much as we can. We should understand their hearts, their feelings, not because they have feelings, which kind of feelings they have, and for whom they have. Because with feelings, they are trying to worship 
Shimati Radhika. Feelings are paraphernalia for worshipping. This is paraphernalia. And when devotee in Sadakavesh is praying, <clears throat> he is worshipping through his prayer. And his prayer is also bhajan. But not for his benefit, for the benefit of his beloved Shimateratika. If someone wants Maharaj or his visions are spontaneous and in them it is as if he directly faces Radha and Krishna. Srimati revives the fainted transcendental youthful Cupid of Rindavan, Sri Krishna, by sprinkling him with the nectar of her own bodily company, playing amorous games in a decorated powerhouse with him. Nagara, Krishna, becomes naughty when she becomes naughty and Swamini goes mad of love. She cannot get enough of playing with Krishna, who is the amorous mellow personified. Shyam also loses himself when he is served by the unprecedented ingredients of Madan Ras, the topmost loving ecstasy of Sri Radhika. Topmost. <laughs> topmost <clears throat> means there is no limit and no one can reach this topmost position which Radhika has in the form of Madanakya Mahabhava. So all emotions which are existing, all emotions which are present in all living beings are present in Radhika in the topmost intensity. And they are They are clashing between each other to the topmost intensity. Sweetness suddenly becomes fear. Fear suddenly becomes man, jealous, angerness. Angerness suddenly becomes compassion, but to the topmost intensity. And Krishna, like a Kamadev, he cannot resist, but he has to faint. He's, like Gurudev is saying, he's spinning around because he becomes crazy completely. Because only of this Madanakya Mahabhav. He is not becoming crazy and he is not spinning around because some gopis made some nice arrangements for their loving exchange with him. No. He is falling on the, he's falling on the floor He's spinning around, he's losing his consciousness, he's rolling on the ground, 
because he cannot survive with in the contact of such strong intense madana ke mahabhav emotions and when he is without consciousness only that person who brings him in this situation can revive him <laughs> no one else can you imagine that lalita vishaka approach to krishna okay you are you lost your consciousness just wake up we will kiss you we'll embrace you and you will wake up no only radhika when he smell radhika's feet radhika's hair radhika's all form he again jump awake Thank you, Tizi. It's not your issue now, because we want to establish Radhika's importance. Because it's it is written in the text. We have to follow the text because it said Radhika is Govinda Jivan. She is making him alive. No one can make him alive, but only person who put him. in the deadly situation you know so okay radhe radhe yes please goranga sundara or her dasis it's it's radhika who can wake up mohan but also her dasis so rasishwari said that and i said <laughs> yes but this is not the issue <laughs> thank you very much But if you continue if we continue in the text it is the issue and if we come back to the verse it is the issue that actually the dasis allow mohan to come there I think it's a special mood and you have uh, already given a very nice entrance with the broom meditation and uh, we have already gotten a lot of times the hint that the first words are like a opening window to the meditation so the broom is the topmost humble position because the broom is is worshiping by cleaning so the dasis they are in this mood they want to worship this place which place they want to worship where krishna becomes so humble that he has to beg the dasis to come into the association into the kunj of swamini so now this situation has been set and then the mood is like very uh, krishna is very submissive also and when he is submissive then that means that swamini is uh, in her you know mood of the the guiding lover she is the one who is guiding mohan and that's what i feel also means uh it's it's confirmed i want to say that baba says swamini becomes naughty first she becomes naughty first from this i feel that she is the guiding heroine in the play this time as we have heard from our acharyas there are different different moods in the love games so this time she is the guiding person because krishna had to beg the maid servants to enter probably she was in man before or she will be in man again that needs to be seen because the situations in this highest uh, ecstasy of madanakya mahabhav they constantly change they constantly change from one ecstasy to another just to please the divine couple or mohan so when radhika becomes naughty then also krishna becomes naughty and their leela continues <laughs> that i just wanted to say that this is a nice feeling to this humility of the broom of the cleaning and of the service 
that seems to be from the material point of view very uh yeah low class service in india you know in the culture of india the brooms if you they don't even want to touch the brooms they don't even want to walk over the brooms this is all supposed to be impure this is supposed to be very low class but here in this leela it is the prayer to be the broom to be the tool to be the the toy the game you know prepare the game prepare the kunj and this beautiful example also that uh, our dear radha charandas gave this broom and i want to also add a little bit i remember one uh, time when gurudev was brooming in front of radha mohan so as we know that in the spiritual realm all these low things from this material realm become very high class if they are performed with a loving and pure uh, mood or feeling radhe yes the broom <clears throat> but who is holding the broom this is another meditation of broom who is holding the broom who is using the broom my guru manjari i want to become a broom in his hands so this is the meaning behind the broom mm. i want to be instrument mm. tool in the hands of radhika's maid servants mm. it's not that i want just to be a broom and while i will clean alone no someone has to catch me to guide me how to clean i'm just instrument maharaj please yes, yes. so broom is okay actually i you know i have remember one past time sorry this trip to sadaka they have past time one day jagannath babaji maharaj was asking i need roti from sweep <laughs> and then many devotees say no 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 they are shudra you cannot eat their roti everybody criticize you blame you your activity then jagannath boy say what are you talking about is there shudra the highest personality because they are serving braja raja braja raja means contain the dust of our radarani and mohan just i was thinking in the kunja you know manjare cleaning at that time what kind of you know item we are cleaning not only dust of radha mohan you know but some kunkuma or breast or head or mask you know on the in the mark of breast or mark of chin you know sweat you know if we think like this there's so many maha prasada of radha mohan is in it who can do this seva so broom is so elevated and this this title say the greatness of radha's maid servant who can serve in this feeling and this remnant of amara's past time 
Just imagine, you know, how fortunate this bloom is. Ah, how fortunate, you know, our manjari are. So therefore, Krishna thinking, oh my God, I want to be the bloom, or I want to be maid servant of Radhika. Because they are so expert. Sometimes I want to put lack of her, her feet. Or sometimes I want to make picture on her breast. But I'm so much ecstasy, my hand trembling. Then sometimes Swamini say, what are you doing? Hey, Torasi, you do this. Get out, Mohan. So this kind of, you know, a feeling also Mohan may taste. So this is completely, what is it? It's nectar. This bloom is nectar, like, you know, full of Mahababa. Manjari also full of Mahababa. I was, you know, thinking, you know, in Gita, superficially, Krishna is supreme person. <laughs> you know, I'm a controller. You know, I create everything. <laughs> and, the, you know, Krishna did not say, cannot say in front of others, you know, sometimes I become mad after love, you know. Sometimes I become naughty like boy or girl. We cannot say, Krishna cannot say in front of others, you know. This very secret. Just imagine, oh, Krishna is controlled by Radhika. Or not only Radhika, Radhika is made servant. Then Radhika is made servant is greater than, you know, Creator. Creator become under control of maid servant. So just I was feeling like this. He is like a beggar sitting in a palace hoping to get a meal. Swamini is his art teacher who teaches her submissive hero the art of Shringar Ras, the amorous mellow. Sripat, in his form as maidservant, looks through the latticed windows of the Kunja and is blessed by seeing these sweet pastimes. So I'm a slow person. Now Manjari Bhava is coming. We should enter with our bhajan first in the main lila, what's going on in Kunja? And then Manjari Bhava appears in a very specific way. That Manjari is just now witnessing through, by seeing through the lattice. We read and felt and relish what's going on in Kunja. Then we are coming out from Kunja and looking behind the shoulders of Manjari, who is witnessing this. This Manjari is our Guru Manjari, superior Manjari. So our meditation is and bhajan to slowly penetrate 
like a diving in a conja, not swimming, but diving. And how we can dive? To be very slow. Because this is the fastest way to be slow. Because meditation, absorption, is something which is very deep and is coming from the heart, not from the mind. Mind wants to swim, jumping, but the heart wants to dive. So we should, when we are reading and when we are listening, we should allow ourselves not to run, but to stay in one place. And Gurudev said, if we have a stay bath, we can peacefully stay in one place and dive. But if we don't have a stay bath so fixed, then we would like to swim. So he is teaching us how to stay and how to dive deeply, deeply, deeply. So art of listening, art of talking, art of meditating, art of praying has to be done according to the instructions, but not only words instructions, according to the bhava of person who is giving these instructions. Now Manjari Bhava is starting. Because whom they want to serve and what kind of things will happen, we should wait to be surprised. Although maybe we heard so many times, but each time is the first time. And the point is to be surprised and allow ourselves and others also to be surprised although we heard hundreds of times. And this is a bhajan, as I understand. Rade. How wonderful is the course of love. Suddenly, Swamini changes her mind. She mercifully remembers her hundreds of girlfriends that were searching for her and Krishna in this Rasa night, and she thinks, Alas, how sweetly we are playing here! How sad! that my girlfriends cannot relish that. The Lila Shakti, pastime potency, made Srimati change her mind. And we want to relish it. We want to relish the moment when Radhika is changing her mood because of Lila Shakti. But still Manjari is outside and looking only through the lattice to the whole of Kunja. And she is relishing this change of feelings in Radhika. Still she didn't become a broom. <laughs> she is relishing Radhika in this beautiful situation. And it's so sweet and astonishing how she changed the mood. And then we can stop to feel that mood as much as we are allowed to feel. Not because we can, but we have to be allowed to feel this. So. 
so that the pastimes of the Yugala Kishora could be enriched. How? How? Now. Finally. Radha and Krishna's girlfriends fully extend and increase their loving pastimes. The Sakis sweetly tell Radha about Krishna's love for her and tell Krishna about Radha's great love for him. When they are separated from each other, and thus they increase their loving attachment for each other. They help them to meet each other. They cause the heroine to become angry with the hero, to increase the hero's eagerness for her love. They make jokes, encourage the Yugala Kishore, deceive their superiors, and help in increasing their loving pastimes in innumerable ways. So it said here, what is the Seva of Sakis? But we should always remember that Manjari still is looking this. And Manjari is still describing this. And she is not involved in this. But she is witnessing how Radhika Sakis, who are same age, Samasneha, are helping Yugala Kishore in their love pastimes. And this is a different mood than Manjaris. We still didn't come to the greatness of Manjari Bhav. <laughs> because in the end, if we go slowly, then we can relish this greatness. Because we will feel, understand, and relish all actors in the Lila. And ultimately, the crown is coming with Radhika Maitsarans. Without the help of the Sakis, these pastimes cannot cause wonder. When Krishna, the jewel of Rasikas, sees Radhika in this pensive mood, he understands what is on her mind and thinks to himself, Oh, well, when, sh when she is so worried about her girlfriends, then there can be no more joy in our love place together. And that's the point. If my beloved is thinking in one moment, he's thinking about her girlfriends. Can you imagine? There is no joy anymore between us. This is Rasa. And Krishna is Raso Vaisaha. He is expert in relishing. And Radhika suddenly changed the mood and she started to worry about her girlfriends. And he said, okay, if she is worried, then there is no joy. Of course, behind is a pastime. This is desire of Radhika. 
But the mood of lovers, we should enter the mood of lovers. Can you imagine if two lovers together and someone is thinking, what my mother is doing? <laughs> what my sister is doing? Everything is broken. Everything is broken. There is no flow of love anymore. So, we should always in the same mood and the same flow meditate on these pastimes. To always be in the flow, not jump around. But. I'd better go and look for them. Why is it she, he? She, he? It's only he. It's mistake. Printing. He goes out of the kuncha in search of the sakis. But just after he left, <laughs> the sakis come up from the other side and meet with Radhika. Seeing that Shyam does not return, Srimati thinks, Tonight there is Rasa dancing and the forests are filled with thousands of beautiful Raj Gopis. Surely, that king of womanizers must have met some other heroine. Another mood. He is Lampata. <laughs> he is womanizer. From worries and caring for her girlfriends, suddenly Radhika is changing the mood. Madana Mahababos. And it's beginning slowly, slowly to be very jealous and angry. But don't forget that all the time, Manjaris are witnessing this scene. Thinking, thinking like this, Srimati becomes jealous and angry, Manini. Sri Rupa Goswami says in Uchwala Nilamrit Nilamani that this man is a result of pure love only. Fear cannot arise without affection and proud, jealous anger, man, cannot arise without love. Love is the source of all emotions. Love is the source of fear. Because I don't want to lose my beloved. I, am f I feel fear. Would he come or not? Who forbid him to not come? Which kind of obstacles appear that he cannot come? So this fear is a result of love, pure love. And this fear is also pure fear, without selfish motives. So it's interesting that fear in material life is completely destroying the person. But fear in a spiritual realm, especially in Vraja, increasing the love. It's increasing. Mother Yashoda is very fearful for her son. What will happen to him? Maybe he will be lost in the forest. 
maybe some wild animals will kill him or hurt him. And this fear nourishing her love the more. The same thing is with Radhika. Her fear because of attachment for Mohan is nourishing her Mahabhava even more. And next is Therefore man reveals the love of both hero and heroine. Srimati engages her maidservants as gatekeepers and forbids them to allow Shyam to enter the Kunj. Now, Manja, finally, <laughs> Maharani said, finally. She's, Radhika is so angry on Krishna <laughs> that she is engaging Manja, is come, come, stand in front of the door and don't, don't allow him to, come, to enter. Now Manjari is starting to, to appear, but also the glories of Manjaris are now especially prominent. When Krishna returns to the gate of the Kunja, unable to find the Sakis, the Kinkaris are at the gate forbid him entrance saying "O oh, king of womanizers where have you gone <laughs> leaving our mistress swamini is angry you have no right to enter this grove go back to that girl where you have been. Go away from this gate. If you stay here too long, our Swamini will rebuke us. How many pitiful and anxious prayer, prayers to come into the Kunja Peacock feather crowned Shyama Sundara then offers to Sri Radha's gatekeeper, gatekeepers with folded hands. So, this is the greatness of Manjari Bhav. Who can speak with Krishna like this? Who can rebuke him like this? Only Manjaris, because Radhika ordered them, and they don't care for this Lampata, womanizer. They are very strong, using very sharp words, prakar. <laughs> In one moment they are dira, peaceful, like a shadow, but when it's necessary they are becoming very sharp. To whom? to Lampata, to Womanizer. So we can see here that their position to guard the door and also to rebuke Krishna actually is the seva of someone who is in the greatest position of devotional service. And this is the Manjaris or Kinkaris. And Krishna with holding, holding his hands very submissively, approached them and praying to them, Krishna. The Kinkaris don't leave their post for even a moment. Krishna's voice is anointed with humility as he prays 
with folded hands. Other than you maid servants, I have no shelter. Make it clear to your Ishwari that she is angry for no reason. I did not do anything wrong. Only to please her, I went out to look for her girlfriends. Where should I go if you girls let me down now? <laughs> this is the greatness of Manjari Bhav. Hey, little girls, I'm taking complete shelter of your lotus feet. I'm taking complete shelter of you. This is the greatness also of Krishna. Because Manjaris wants to worship this kind of Krishna, who is subdued not to them, but to her Swamini, to their Swamini. And it's so merciful from our Acharyas that they are opening this window, this door, this lattice, through their words, that we can at least a little bit enter in this emotional exchange. This is pure emotional exchange. And everyone has specific role in this exchange, which we call Lila, eternal exchange. Krishna is the supreme male, God himself. Although all the people of the world pray for his mercy, now he prays to Radha's maidservants with folded hands. Blessed is the service of Radha. Srimad Rupa Goswami prays. O Queen of Rindavan, I pray for your mercy again and again. Let me be the object of even Keshi Rup's, Ripus, Krishna's pitiful prayers. Let me be the object of even Keshi Ripus, Krishna's pitiful prayers. This service of Sri Radha is the special mercy of Sriman Mahaprabhu. The king is only like Krishna because he is Sri Radha's lover. The king is only like Krishna because he is Radha's lover. They don't have independent. In they don't have independent independent love for him. Independent. Oh. Thank you. They don't have independent love for him. If Krishna makes any trouble, 
They will kick him out of the Kunja. With devotees here are laughing. <laughs> so this is the sign of relishing. They're enjoying because Krishna is in this position. They are relishing this. To see him, that he is like a beggar to the manjaris. And everyone who is situated in Manjari Baba will feel great joy when he is listening this or meditating on this. And Rupa Goswami is saying, I want to be the object of your prayer. You should pray to me very proudly. Rupa Manjari is saying, you should pray to me. I'm very proud that you pray for me, that you can attain my beloved Swamini. I want to be object of your prayer. You are the object, usually. But now Rupa is saying, like a manjari, I want to be object to whom you will play, because it will satisfy and give the pleasure to my Swamini and you. Not for my own benefit. <laughs> and if you, you know, I may become your object of prayer, because what do you think who, you know, what do you think who am I? I am Dasi of Radha, and I want to help you to meet our Swamini. Who else can do it? So, Manjari is very proud. Also, Manjari spe uh, speciality is Manjari want to see Mohan is, uh, how do you say, obedient of Swamini. Especially here, Brindaban, there is some Seva Kunja. So, generally speaking, Radhika may serve Mohan, but uh, in this Seva Kunja, is Mohan want to serve Radhika. And Manjava is very proud to see in this, this scene. Because Manjari is Radha Adik Suneha. Only Manjari can see also. Especially Nikunja pastime. So, sometimes Radha Rani changed. Swadina, let's say, Swadina, the kind of, you know, Swanya Parishya, kind of, you know, Radha Rani has become little pushy, a kind of a controller. Hey, Mohan, what are you doing? You dress me. You, you are so naughty. My clothes was, you know, losing. My kunkuma is also, you know, broken. So, please do this. And this thing Manjari is tasting, and uh, sometimes Manjari is laughing, kind of, kind of jiggled. So Goranga Sundaraji explained very nicely, so we can feel it and taste it. Yes, uh, Jainanda Maharaj, I agree completely. I feel also this high mood of Radhika as Vadina Batrika, this lady lover's, you know, dominance, dominant lady love. And isn't it amazing? I was, whole time, I was thinking, usually if I see it from my Sadaka Deha, I would say this situation is not fair to Krishna. 
<laughs> Swamini has a mood. She wants, she thinks about her girlfriends. And Krishna says, okay, uh, I will get them. Because you feel about your girlfriends. They should also be here. Everyone should be heavy together. So there Leela is interrupted. So Krishna goes out and is getting the girlfriends, trying to find them, to make her happy. But when he comes back, the mood has again changed. <laughs> no, he cannot go in onto the kunj. It's, you know, from the human kind of understanding, I could feel empathy for Krishna. But from the kind of, you know, feelings of Manjari, she has the same feelings as Swamini. There's no mercy. You get out here. You cannot come in. You are a womanizer. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really a very astonishing uh, uh, increase of the eagerness of Mohan to come in. And he doesn't understand the world. He is actually in that situation. He's very innocent. I just tried to get the girlfriends that you wanted, but I couldn't catch them. Let me come in again. No, you left <laughs> because you want to enjoy somewhere. Go back where you want to enjoy. So this uh, is very interesting to see from different, different feelings of perspectives. I feel also very interesting that how loyal the Kinkaris are to Swamini's moods, they easily adopt the moods. For them, it's a natural. They don't feel pity for Krishna. <laughs> I mean, of course, they want them together. That is true. But in that situation... They just adopt to the mood of Swamini and easily they will say, stay out, you are not wanted here. And he doesn't understand what is going on. <laughs> Nadi Radi, what I felt is maybe adopting or maybe they do this all for to increase the love. So they have the feeling of Swamini, they can feel what Krishna feels and they have their own feeling. And then I think, or I feel, so to do this, that will increase um, all these feelings in the Leela. Maybe they are the fewer and not um, in this moment, the shadow, more the fewer, I don't know. Yes. You finished? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please continue. Without the permission of Srimati Rupa Manchari and her maid servants, Krishna cannot enter Radha's groves. What to speak of touching her body? This is the indescribable greatness of Radha's maidservants. When the maidservants see how anxious Krishna is, they allow him to enter the kunja. Maidservants has to see the eagerness to allow someone to enter in close association of Radhika. If there is no eagerness, even in Krishna, they will not allow it. <laughs> like Guru Dev is saying, sorry to say. <laughs> and this is the... <clears throat> and he is warning us, actually, be careful in which bhava you are situated, because ultimately Man Ananga Manjari will test you. And it, I can imagine, or maybe I cannot imagine even, which kind of heavy test is. But this test, test be very easily passed if we are situating in our sty above. Otherwise, it's not possible. Yeah. They don't need Radharani's permission. Because they know that, although she is angry with Krishna, she is also anxiously waiting for him. Shyamasundar knows 
that Srimati will soon give up her peak. When he has pleased her girlfriends and her maidservants. Thus, Rasikashi Romani, Krishna, the crown jewel of romantics, enters the Kunsha and dispels the unfavorable mood of Rasikamani. Sri Radhika, the jewel of romantic girls, causing a slight smile, smile to appear on her beautiful face like a thin, sweet line. Wow. Thin, sweet line. So this is very hidden smile very hidden smile and only someone who is expert lover can know how to smile in the proper moment you know? because this kind of smile is giving Krishna incredible happiness just slight like a tiny line like a new moon which is appearing on the sky. New, new, just tiny line, half of the moon. It's Radhika's smile. Because through her smile, she is revealing her happiness. He is revealing all her emotions. And Manjari is also the very clearly understand what is, which kind of emotions are behind this tiny smile. The king of romantics becomes absorbed in his love place with his heart's beloved holding her in his jewel-like heart, seeing this sweet pastime. Shripat, who now appears as an adolescent girl, says, Rasa Nidar Risha Banu Jayaha. <coughs> Shirada is the jewel in Krishna's heart. Taken that, the word Rasa means Krishna, who is spiritual flavor personified. Sri Radha's sweetness and beauty is manifest to the utmost when she plays with Sri Krishna. Sri Raghunath Das Goswami writes in Vishakandanda Stotram. Sri Radha shines like a golden Yutika wine, entwining a beautiful black Tamala tree, Krishna, and as a wonderful, steady, lightning vine in the fresh Govinda rain cloud. The word Rasanidi in the text can also mean she who is an ocean of Rasa. In this case, Radhika makes her lover happy by immersing him 
in the waves of her wonderful, sweet, amorous Rasa. So this is the reason why we are reading Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. <coughs> to feel Radhika's presence, to understand her emotions, to, to know her, who is this person. And by reading Rasa Ra Sudhanidhi, Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, it's not said Krishna Rasa Sudhanidhi, it said Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. <laughs> to know Radhika better, all her qualities, all her emotions. <clears throat> and when devotee accept this Radha, then immediately he wants to become her maidservant. Wow. And immediately he wants to make another step. How to become expert in my maidservant? So he is approaching to Vilapa Kusumanjali. Because in a detailed way, Raghunath is explaining, and also he is giving mercy for Prayojan, but not ordinary Prayojan. Manjari Bhav goal. Yes, please. <clears throat> Very beautiful explanation. And uh, Krishna said, I'm Rasa, Raso by Saha. But actually, Krishna's Rasa, where, you know, who, where come from Krishna's Rasa? This is Radharani. From Radharani, this Rasa is coming. Like, from Radha Kunda. This water goes through the Shama Kunda. So we are thinking, you know, Krishna is, you know, full of rasa, maharasa. No, actually not true. Radhika giving taste. Radhika makes Krishna taste this rasa needy. And to help Krishna taste this rasa, rasa needy. This is Manjari Baba, this is Manjari. So therefore, how Manjari Baba is, is so, so exalted, so higher taste. Because Manjari, Manjari Baba means Rasa and Rasa Nidhi and make together and Manjari makes Krishna to taste this rasa, uh, rasa nidi. And rasa nidi, in that sense, different explanation is Mahababa. And Madana Mahaba, Madana Kya Mahaba. Crazy, completely amazing, completely astonishing, no, ever, never happen to ordinary condition soul. Only this Rasa and Mahababa together. This, this Manjari was so, so, and also Manjari is interesting. This Manjari is always viewer, always seeing and whatever needed just to do like like shadow know the heart of our swami so this is uh, amazing suddenly the transcendental revelation disappears and tripad humbly prays Am I at all qualified for this precious position of service to Sri Radha? Let me at least become the broom 
for sweeping the yard of her play cottage in the forest bowers of Vrindavan as a service to those fortunate souls who are qualified to be her maidservants. Again, again, this last Let me at least become the broom for sweeping the yard of her play cottage in the forest bowers of Rindavan as a service to those fortunate souls who are qualified to be her maidservants. I want to be a broom. I want to be a broom because I'm not qualified for anything else. But if Radhika's maidservants hold me and catch me, their qualification, their love will make me useful. So we can see here how expertly all circle is starting from broom and through the lila is going on and finishing with the broom. So Sadakavir, Swarupir, Sadakavir. Swarupir, Sadakavir, Swarupir. The waves. Under the guidance of Rasik devotees. So amazing. Of course, by her grace, everything is possible. Let me sweep the dust that falls from merciful Sri Radha's foot soles. End of verse 8. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Goranga Sundara explained very nicely. This explain this sadaka, this author, the humble mood. Here mentioned, you know, I, I was in, interested in this, at least, at least here mentioned, at least become the broom for sweeping the yard. <laughs> Means I wish to become maid servant, but if I could not, let me become broom, then I can serve the dust of our Swamini. And then this dust come upon on my head. Then I may be qualified one day. And this in spiritual world, this broom is also conscious. So this this is Manjari's, you know, sadaka aspirant is a very, very humble attitude. And this humble attitude we could attain real goal of life, which is Baba Urasa, Manjari Baba. This is a kind of example that I feel it. Thank you, Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, everyone. Gurudev, I don't know, are you listening or you want to help somehow your poor disciples?
Okay. Maybe it's time to stop. Because we should know the right moment when to stop. And next to engagement also. Next to Lira will start. Yeah. In Munger Raj Monday. Yeah. Today we have a spiritual. Today in, in a Munger, uh, Munger Raj Monday, from he, now we have a spiritual uh, uh, engagement for Japanese devotees. The one couple tried to promise engagement for the service of Radha Mohan. They want to get, yes. So, 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 thank you very much. So we have to stop.